the F1 Racing Series has gone from this. I thought we'd just seen this two abreast once again in towards turn number nine. Burmond still leads. Gaps is less than two tenths, hard medium, and you want to save up all your battery and tires until the final lap and not lead to this. Otis went a lap later than Danny, and now they've got. Going to mostly medium hard, we want to undercut as soon as possible, get onto the hard tires, and use the dirty air and the engine overheating from the cars behind to maintain the lead until the end. And the reason for this is shown in the code. Increases in slipstream drag, increases in slipstream width, and increases in ride height have all led to increase in dirty air and now more engine overheating. But have these changes actually impacted overtaking or the ability for drivers to move up from a poor quality position into a good one? Well, that's what I analyzed. On F124, I looked at every PSGL F1 and F1 esports race. And on F125, I looked at every PSGL F1, F2, and E series race. 24 and 22 races in total. That's 920 points of where drivers started and, and finished the race. And the results were interesting. The first thing you can do is you can make a histogram of F124 versus F125. This is plotting the frequency of the change in position with zero being the most frequent on both graphs. Then the next most frequent being a gain in one or two positions. And then you can see no one has gained more than 16 positions in any F124 or F125 race. And then the most anyone's ever lost was, was minus 17. This is just the top tier racing. Then if you look at the F125 graph, you know it's a bit more peaky. There's a bit more values around 0, 1, and uh, negative 1. So the bell shape is now kind of curved up. So what's that, that's showing you? That's showing you that there's less overtaking and there's less change of positions um, through the kind of the wider range of the bell. And this is more closely matches real life uh, F125 racing, where it's even more peaking, peaky, where most of the other curve values are between 0 and 1. We can also look at the average change of positions from F124 to F125. That has gone down from an average of four and a half positions changed to four positions changed. Next, we can plot the data and calculate its correlation coefficient. This is a value between negative one and one, and it shows how correlated quality results are with the race. If everyone finished in the, the race the same order they started, it would be a linear line and it would be a, co a correlation value of one. If they finish in reverse order, it would be a negative linear line and it would be a value of negative one. A value of zero would be a kind of a random finishing order where, where you started didn't have an impact on where you ended. So I wanted to break it down between wet and dry races. For dry races on F124 to F125, you'll see that the C value increased from 0.48 to 0.62, signaling that now qualifying is more important than ever uh, from F124 to F125. For a reference, real life F1, which doesn't have equal cars, and F125 does have equal cars, has a value of 0.75. Generally, anything over 0.5 is considered a strong correlation. For wet races on F124 to F125, both had a value of 0.4. So not much has changed there. It's gone from 0.44 to 0.46, showing that if you like overtakings and if you like more randomness, you want it to rain. For example, a wet PSGL F124 race in UK had a C value of basically zero. So I haven't seen anything with a C value of negative one, but this is like, it didn't really matter where you started. There was enough change in dynamics of the conditions that, and people were using wets uh, in an interconditions that this was a C value of zero. So more stats you probably would be interested in is what the pole to win rate is. On F124, it was 20%. On F125 at 36%. Then converting a top three in qualifying to a podium in the race, 40% on F124, 55% on F125. Both values increasing by about 15 to 16%, showing that qualifying is more important than ever. A final value I'd like to leave you with is the 95% confidence interval that you will not lose or gain more than a certain number of positions which could be done by finding the standard deviation and using this equation shown here, we see that 95% of the time, you will not gain or lose more than 11 and a half positions on F124 and 10 and a half positions on F125. This is why making it to Q3 or, 
or at least being 11th or 12th in qualifying is so important. There's less than a 5% chance that you'll make it into the podium positions or win from outside the top 12. If you enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. I kind of enjoy doing these like kind of mini documentaries into the, into the F1 series games. Uh, if you're interested in setups or lap analysis, I'm now partnered with Sim Racing Setups. So there's a link in the description for that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe as always. See ya. Bye.